Chapter 1 Richard Ainsworth put the lid back on his yellow highlighter. He needed peace and quiet to finish his Christmas paperwork, and the unexpected return of Valerie Dorsey to the Follet Valley was giving him anything but that. In fact, she seemed to him to be on something of a mission. He carefully closed French tacks for dummies, laid the highlighter pen neatly on top, and took a deep breath. Well? She was in full-on badgering mode, and Richard was determined not to be badgered. She wasn't even supposed to be in rural France, having told him she had urgent business in Paris over Christmas. This meant, to Richard at least, that some poor sap was going to get tracked down at great expense and delivered to whoever her paymasters were this time. Probably all wrapped up, too. Presumably even bounty hunters have a festive streak in them. However, keeping track of her in the few months they'd known each other had proved futile. She would turn up when least expected and disappear when most needed. So for now, he was resigned to having her almost like a tidal presence in his life, and whether going in or out, destabilising the sand beneath his feet. Well, she repeated, well what? He was fully aware that this type of non-committal response was akin to lighting Valerie's fuse and sending her mood rocketing from level one to ten in mere seconds, but Richard had come to a decision. He was not going to commit to anything any more. The only thing he was going to commit to was the decision to bow out from all commitment. It felt to him that he'd spent the vast majority of his adult life being tossed about by other people's whims, like a beach ball by a group of performing seals. Well, if that was going to happen when he put effort into life, it was going to happen when he didn't. So he decided to go full Casablanca Humphrey Bogart and was now sticking his neck out for nobody. Take Valerie, for instance, and their, for want of a looser term, relationship. He was aware that he was behaving like a love-struck teenager. Or worse, a needy puppy, though lower in the pecking order than her actual dog, the terminally judgmental Chihuahua Passepartout. It was time to play hard to get, in his opinion. Were they in a relationship? No. Were they going to be in a relationship? He had no idea. Was he divorced? No. Was he going to be divorced? Probably, though he'd left that up to Claire. He was definitely single, however. Well, single-ish. Whatever was about to happen, with Valerie or just life in general, this was his first Christmas alone, and he'd been secretly looking forward to it. He had plans. Finally, he could do the things that he wanted to do over the festive period. Finally, he had control. Are you sulking because it's your first Christmas without Claire? It was terrifying how she could rifle through the messy drawers of his mind and know exactly what he was thinking. He didn't even know what he was thinking half the time. The woman was a sorceress. He tried to clear his mind and picked up his tax book again. I just fancied a quiet Christmas, that's all. I've, I've shut the chambre d'hôte. Madame Tablier is away at their sister's on the other side of the world. The next village, Valerie snorted. The next village, yes. And I have a mountain of paperwork to do. It's the end of the tax year. He lifted the book to illustrate his point. But the chambre d'hôte is not close, Richard, because we are staying here. She pointed towards Passepartout on the other side of the room, asleep in a bed so bejeweled and ornate that it looked more like a throne. Yes, but, well, you're... Well, you haven't even booked, he sighed heavily. Do I need to? She smiled warmly at him, and he could feel himself blushing. Obviously not, but I, I thought you were staying in Paris for Christmas anyway. Her response was immediate. Pah! she said and started to pace the room. I do not like Paris at Christmas any more. They are the, the smiling, happy faces reflected in the shop windows, and yet people starve and sleep in the doorways at night. It's vulgar. He'd never seen this side of her before. Granted, he hadn't known her all that long, nor even, if he were honest, all that well. But he would never have put her down as the avenging social angel type. She was clearly quite angry about something, though. Anyway, she continued, the fire in her eyes dying down as suddenly as it had risen. I thought you would like the company. He blushed again and went back to his tax book. Are you really going to spend all of Christmas filling in your taxes, Richard? I don't have a choice, he replied, removing his glasses in what he hoped was heroic fashion. I can't afford an accountant and I just want them out of the way. You have to understand that you French are used to your bureaucracy, whereas we foreigners find it absolutely terrifying.